So the topic for today is JSON, which is uh, an acronym for JavaScript Object Notation. Um, JSON is really just a method of um, storing data or representing information. Uh, quite a few years ago, XML became really uh, popular as a, a kind of a universal, ubiquitous, and um, technology agnostic way to store and communicate data. Uh, as you can see here in this example in W3Schools, um, XML you can kind of just make up uh, kind of a schema or a, a design for how you want to represent a bunch of information no matter what it is, no matter how complicated it is, um, and you can and store it there. And uh, you know you don't have to worry about what system somebody's using, whether it's you know uh, what operating system they're using, what kind of uh, software they're using, pretty much anything, including a human being could can look at XML and be able to figure it out. JSON is almost exactly the same thing as XML. The only difference, um, you know, this is, I, I guess this is highly debatable. Um, obviously, look, W3Schools claims in bold letters that JSON is an easier to use alternative than XML. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Um, me personally, I, when I can read XML a lot better. Certainly JSON is smaller, um, which might explain why it's more popular these days to use JSON to communicate information back and forth between clients and servers. Um, so the reason we're learning that this this week is because the next topic we're going to be moving on to is Ajax and um, basically asynchronous communication between clients and servers and JSON is kind of the weapon of choice that most people use when uh, they want to do client-server communication. I mean it was XML a while ago but really you know JSON is kind of like the de facto uh, language for communicating raw data in string form like this back and forth. So it's human readable, uh, it's completely extensible, you can design it any way you want to store any information you want no matter how complicated it is. So that's kind of you know the the philosophy of, of JSON. I'm not sure if it's you know easier to use than XML, but it's you know certainly equivalent to it, um, except it just looks a little different. So talking about um, the syntax a little bit, um, let me just open up a Notepad here. So JSON is a bunch of name value pairs, pretty much as simple as that. Where one name value pair would be you know here's your name, uh, the name of the variable. So maybe like what's your name. I shouldn't use a name for the name, like um, what's the value of x, and then the value would be something like 5, or it could be a string value, it could be something like ASTF. And then, you know, you can kind of create objects that are collections of those, so you can say um, the value of x is 5, and then you can comma delimit it, and then the value of y, it might be Ten or something like that. You just got to make sure that you comma delimit them all, but nev but never put a comma after the last one. So that'll mess you up if you do that. It's, it can mess some things up. So this is um, this would be one simple name value pair, and this would be a, a JavaScript or sorry a JSON object, which is a bunch of you know a collection of name value pairs. Another thing you can do is you can make an array, like you can like you see over here in the example. They have uh, that right there. So this the s single bracket is kind of the array so if the you know the first element in the list could be x is 5 and then the next one could be something like um, some numbers and the value of that you know you could make it an array so that would be like a comma delimited list of just numbers you'd be like 1 3 5 7 9 whatever and you can kind of format this however you want uh, some people I guess most people do this where they put, um, they kind of do, for the outermost one, it's usually like that, but then for some reason they kind of leave the second bracket up there and then put that one down there, something like that. So you can kind of do it however you want, but you can see the point is that the numbers are, are uh, the elements in the array and they're also comma delimited. And you know the stuff inside of uh, the the elements inside of the array also can be objects. So you know if I space these out a little bit, if I say like you know, oops, let's do it this way. One, three, five, seven, nine. So I could do something like this. I could say you know what, this one isn't just a number. It's actually you know, a complicated object. So, 
and then in here I could start doing this all over again. I could say, you know, A1 is something just start throwing name value pairs in there. So it's really just you know, kind of building up um, collections of information using this syntax and there really is nothing else other than the name value pair, the object, and the array. So you know using those three um, syntax pieces, those, those three pieces of syntax you can build um, and nest as complicated information as you want. Um, you know this this example right here is pretty self-explanatory. You have a, an array with three objects in it and each object ha is a common delimited collection of two name value pairs. Um, I would also like to point out that there is uh, like pretty print tools out there. I usually use uh, JSON pretty print. So this is pretty nice. Like I don't like the way this looks. I can't read it very well. And if you put it in here and you pretty print it, to me that's much easier to, to read because I can see employees and then I clearly see these three nodes here. Um, and it separates the values pretty nicely. So this is like kind of what I was typing in a notepad. This is the format that that I usually use. Um, so that's pretty much that. Um, you know, just to get started, this I just really wanted to introduce you to the syntax of it. Um, you can read this other some of these other things in um, W3 Schools of some of the details of how it's used and how we're going to talk about using it um, is in the context of it really being the standard language for communicating back and forth between the client and the server. So since we started, we're kind of using MVC4 as our standard server-side technology just for the sake of having some type of back-end to show in the examples. Um, I'm going to show you one example of uh, MVC4 uh, grabbing you know, a big, uh, basically one of its models and a big C-sharp model and instead of sending the C-sharp model back to the client, I'll show you, you know, an example of C-sharp breaking that model down into pure JSON and sending that over as a string. And then on the flip side, I'll show you an example of um, in jQuery or in J JavaScript on the client side being able to take um, that raw string, the JSON string, and s basically deserializing it back into an object graph and being able to, to use that to um, model things. So that's really uh, useful because most of the time we try to, you know, send just JSON across the across the wire when we're communicating back and forth between a client and the server. So on the client side, you know, you receive this big node of, of JSON, which is basically just a string, and you want to take that and you want to just like magically transform it or parse it or deserialize it, if you will, into this object graph that's really easy to work with. So in the next com uh, couple of videos, I'm going to be showing you how to do that. I'll probably just do two videos, one to just set it up you know, and uh, re-explain what I'm trying to do, and uh, another one that goes into kind of the gory details of the serialization and deserialization. And uh, that should set us up for next week, which is going to be um, like a, a pretty uh, pragmatic example of client-server communication using jQuery AJAX calls, which uh, you know, implicitly use JSON as the language of communication.